when I make art, I listen to baseball. And most people find that really odd because my work has a very feminine nature to it. And I prefer to listen to baseball than to listen to music. One of the things I like about baseball is that it's a lot more concrete uh, compared to making art. I mean, you either hit the ball or you don't. You get to first base or you don't. You strike somebody out or you don't. Art is a lot more ambiguous than that. The reason I listen to baseball while I work is it engages part of my brain. And then so too much of my brain doesn't get in the way of the art making. My work is actually somewhere in between abstract and realism. It varies along like a bell curve of abstract and realism. Sometimes there are a lot of recognizable aspects to it and other times you really have to look to find them. There's always some kind of reference to something in nature or, or man-made. For example, I like to use references to the body, especially the female body. And I also like to use fabrics and patterns and clothing, such as netting, lace, chain link fence, things that you can see through. The most common question people have about my work is how I make it, because they can't believe I actually hand cut it. And so I let them know, yes, I do. I use an X-Acto knife. I don't use a laser cutter. I've never even seen a laser cutter. And for me, cutting with an X-Acto knife is really like drawing, except I'm not using a pencil. Sometimes people think men made my art, especially some of the work that has a lot of lingerie aspects to it. And they'll even think it's kind of perverted, and then they're really surprised to find out that a woman made it, and then they're okay with it. I like to hang my work away from the wall because the gaps or the holes create a shadow on the wall and the work then has more than one dimension to it. And I like that it has more than one dimension. It has a surface, but then there's something beyond that. So I like that metaphorically and visually it usually looks pretty beautiful. Um, I paint the backs different colors and depending on what color it is, it reflects off the wall. So I may get a pink shadow or a red shadow. The people that interest me most and the reason I do it is because they're just compelled to do it. Like you just, you have to do it or you just don't feel right. Something is just missing. You feel physically sick, emotionally sick. You just have to do it. If I'm feeling really anxious or depressed or just out of sorts, once I'm working, everything just feels fine. Even if I have a lot of challenges and, and uh, don't like where I'm going. It just feels like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm working on a couple different ideas right now. 
One of the ideas is merging my interest in the body and in clothing and merging them so that they are kind of like body and clothing at the same time. It would be as if some of your skeletal parts or organic parts merged with the actual fabric and it became one thing. It's kind of the inner outer becoming one thing instead of two separate things. Because I'm not really interested in fashion per se. I actually like the objects. I like uh, lingerie objects. I like clothing and accessories as sculpture. The reason I do women or female clothing and, and body is because I'm a woman and that just interests me most. That's my own experience. Women are more interesting visually because they, at least in this time, uh, maybe in the old days, men's clothing was just as flamboyant and interesting as women's clo clothing, but nowadays it's not. Men's clothing is a lot more bland um, and less elaborate. I will start with something that's just percolating in my brain, something I've been thinking about. It might be about weddings, it could be about 50s women in their peignoirs, smoking a cigarette and drinking a cocktail. It could be about something a little more edgy like violence against women. These are just things that go on in my brain, but I don't set out to actually illustrate them. It just gives me a starting point. The work never turns out how I expect it will. Um, so I don't really have a lot of expectations. I, I've decided that's pointless. I'll just start with some section, start there, and see where that takes me. I work very organically. I don't really know what an image is going to look like ahead of time. That just would not be fun for me to know ahead of time. So I like to start at one place and then go from there and then just make decisions along the way. So I will draw parts that serve as like a pattern for where I'm going to cut and then I'll stop that for a while and maybe draw another part or I will paint another part. I use acrylic paint on these paper pieces. I also use pigment ink markers and I also use a wood burning tool and to get textures and the tone. I really enjoy cutting paper. In fact, I kind of have to do it, which is interesting. I'm sure that I'm actually getting a lot of kind of anger and aggression out when I do cut paper. I have gotten a lot better at cutting paper without cutting myself, but I've been to the emergency room three times. In fact, the last time it cost me close to $1,200 for two stitches. So next time that happens, I'm just gonna super glue my finger. I want to be like the batter when I'm facing the picture and not really know exactly what's coming. I'm going to guess, but I don't really know what's coming. And I might strike out or I might hit that home run. But the not knowing part is really the best part to be in. You never want to know exactly what you're doing. In fact, the more you know what you're doing, it's probably going to be, at least for me, it becomes a little too contrived. 